I'm coming first. process is completely different so we thought we would show you from start to finish how we are milking the girls with the machine and how we clean the machine at the end. First thing we do is fill up the feed trough with the food they're going to eat while they're being milked and that's all kept upstairs in our loft feed area. It was bound to happen so we have our food. The next thing we're going to do is get the machine hooked up so it's ready for the first goat. So we have our pump down on the floor. And this will change later on, but this is how we have it set up right now. We have our pump down on the floor. The vacuum line is hooked up to up here. This is pretty much the simple pulse machine minus the simple pulse blue overflow container. So then we have a vacuum pump here. We're going to hook this jar up. This is a simple pull. So one of their lid styles. We really like this. Okay, we're going to hook up the, one of the vacuums to the top. So now we're going to hook up the vacuum hose to one of the ports. The one. other port is going to hook to our inflations, which are hanging, drying. Okay. These, these are the top flow Z Nigerian dwarf uh, inflations. So we have a, a vacuum line, the clear one is the vacuum line, and the off white one is the milk line. The milk line will go to the bottle and the clear line will go to the pulsator. And if you have the opportunity to upgrade to these inflations, Simple Pulse does sell them. And I think they're much better than the regular ones. They're a little bit shorter and they have the function that starts and stops suction right on the inflation. So. so we've got that hooked to the jar. And now we can go get our goat. We do. After we clean them, we have them clicked up into the cleaning position. So you have to, you have to click them down. There's a little, a little tab that holds them. So you just click them down. Now they're now they're ready to milk. When you engage this on the tee, that's what starts the vacuum. And then when it drops down, it, it's engaged in vacuuming. Milking. It's milking. Saving our hands. It's amazing. We absolutely love milking with the machine. It's a total lifesaver and before you even get your first goat, you should save up for a machine. <laughs> it's well worth it. Pretty much the same procedure as when we were hand milking. Uh, we have some Dawn and a dishcloth. Uh, we're gonna rub, you know, we're gonna clean the udder really good. We're gonna clean the teats really good with just the, the mild dish soap and uh, the, the washcloth, just to get any dirt or debris off the teats. We're still gonna do our iodine, iodine teat dip. Where it spills all over the place. We're gonna let the iodine um, sit on the teat for about 20, 30 seconds. Uh, we'll still strip a couple squirts just to make sure there's no bacteria um, down in the teat duct. Okay. So we'll do that. And then we're ready to put the inflations on. The first thing we do is turn on the vacuum pump. And then we make sure on the gauge that we're at about 12 inches of vacuum. That's how it's measured. And that the pulsator's functioning and everything's good to go. So we do that first before we just put the inflations on because we're still relatively new to this and this setup uh, itself. So just to make sure that we've got the right amount of vacuum, you don't want to have too much vacuum because that can damage the teeth itself. So typically for uh, Nigerians, um, a lot of people are milking at about 12 inches of vacuum. So we're going to flip, flip the pump on. It gets a little loud at this point, but you'll be able to see 
see how we're doing this. And this part goes really fast. It's amazing. So we've got it at 12. This is how you adjust your pressure if you need to. Yeah, this is a, a regulator right here. And so we have it just under 12 inches of vacuum. And what we're gonna do is come down to the teeth, put these on, line them up, and then you'll hear a little clicking when you get it engaged. Just like that. that. And it'll start to move. People have said that you kind of have to tilt them back a little bit. Now our milk is flowing into our jar. Much faster than with our hands. <laughs> oh my gosh, it takes like hardly any time. So we'll go from this tunnel from that and then go up here and then it goes into the jar. Good job, buddy. You just want to keep it on when it stops. When your goat is empty, the inflation will actually get really loose and fall off or slide up the udder and you want to make sure you get it off before that happens. Shut the pump off, and we will go get the next goat. This is how much milk Fern had. She's been consistently giving about two, two cups or so every milking. And she's a first freshener yearling. If you're new here, this is Fernie. The newest one here is, I think, Braun. And then when we're done you're milking, right. um, after everything's all done, we don't strip after we use the machine uh, because they don't they don't recommend that because then they won't let their milk down for the machine. They'll hold a little bit back if you strip them after you pull the inflations off. And here's so a little we'll... tip for milk. If the goat's kicking and it's kicking for more food, don't give it food or, or else the next time you milk, it'll kick more for food. You are so right, dude. Good job, you're such a smarty. So the point of the, um, the point of the fight back is to kill bacteria and the, the aerosol, the coldness of the aerosol actually closes up that teeth orifice so there's less bacteria and less dirt that can get up in there after you've milked. Gertie is recovering from a sickness so she is on the thin side. We are aware. Her milk production is almost completely back to normal. So it's pretty awesome. Hold on, Gertie. He's coming. Oh, sure. Right here, Jason. You gotta spray on these rags right here. 
There you go. Nice. Nice job. Um, you go better. I'm gonna So after each milking, we do a little cleaning routine, just pretty basic. It's just run soapy water through. After you're done with the soapy water, we'll run a little bit of bleach water through, and then we'll hang up the inflations to dry. We don't have our setup perfect yet, so we've been unhooking our inflations and then hanging them up on a hook that we have, but we'll get a little better setup. We just kind of got things all together so we, that we can use it. So after we're done with the machine, we put our milk, either get another container or use our milk or whatever we're gonna do. We get another container, and this is what we're going to put our flush or our wash solution into. There's a little clip right here. It's a small clip. You can see how you can lift it up and then clip it over like that. That will hold the inflation open so that it's vacuum all the time. No pulsation, it just continually pulls vacuum. So we'll put these inflations in this bucket of soapy water. But there is a small vent on this style inflation, inflation right here. And you don't want to cover that up with water because then it won't work right. So we'll just put them down in there, rinse them around a little bit, and then we'll cycle the pump once or twice to fill this jar about halfway. Then we'll dump this out, cycle some bleach water through it, let it sit for a minute, and then we'll empty it out and hang up our inflations and we're done. It's a pretty quick, pretty quick process. Chase, hit the button. Oh wait, I gotta do this part. Yeah. I'm gonna hold on to it. I got it, Jason, I got it. Watch the jar for me, Jason. I'm sure that jar doesn't work. That's the soapy water. This is the part you gotta be careful not to overflow your machine. Cause it goes so fast. Cause I built this one, there's no safety feature. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get when you cheap out. <laughs> so this is the bleach water and I've emptied out the jar of soapy water so that we don't overfill our jar because if we overfill our jar, we're going to suck water up into our vacuum pump and our pulsator and we don't want to do that. So. We're just gonna pulse the pump again and get some of the water in here and then we're gonna let it soak for about 10 minutes. Okay. So we've, we've been consistently getting about four cups, just shy of four cups, sometimes right at four cups from our first freshener, Skirty and Fern. Yeah. Which is not, uh, not too bad, I think, for... Two Nigerians, uh, you get this much twice a day. Yeah, so this is a half half gallon jar. So we, so we get, get a, a little a, over half gallon. Half gallon of milk a day from the two little goats, which is plenty for our family. So that's our new milking routine with the machine. It's life changing. <laughs> Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Oh, 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 o